speaker, Mrs. Kimberly Wellman, Rookie of the Year, and recent NMD, um, again topping the list for all kinds of unicorn feats, a beautiful, dedicated mum, and now doing Juice Plus full time, is going to share with us the real story of not unicorns and rainbows. Let's give her a huge round of applause as we invite her up to the stage, Kimberly Wellman! I love you. Thank you. Enjoy. Thanks, bud. be a lot easier if we could just keep dancing and forget this little bit for a moment because I am, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is my very first time presenting to an audience of this size and being on a stage. And right now, that little voice is going off. What are they going to think? What happens if I muck up the words? What happens if my heel goes down that little hole right there? And, you know, what, what if I fail? Does anyone else ever have that little voice go off in this business ever? Can everyone look around the room right now and take a look at that? Because what I've learned is when I'm feeling this way and my body's all tense, I get this little red rash going when I get very nervous. Um, what I know is that's fear in the driver's seat, right? And you never get used to that feeling. And it's, it's in here right now, physically and emotionally, I can feel it. But what I've learned is that when this fear comes up, it's like this little wall that comes up. And I used to spend so much time getting to this point and then doing a quick U-turn and running back. But what I've learned is what we think is in the way really is the way forward in this business. So I get to talk to you about three of my favorite things and they are goals, growth, and mindset in this business. For those of you that don't know me and we're meeting for the first time today, um, my name is Kimberly Wellman. I am a, a proud wife to my high school sweetheart, Ben. He hates it when I include that bit, he's like so cliche. Um, and we have three children within 19 months of age. So for those of you doing the maths right now, I got two for one on a very unexpected pregnancy after my first. And I'm really honored to serve you today as a new national marketing director for the Juice Plus company. <laughs> so I wanna dive straight into this. I think we've really learned the power of your story today. And I wanna share with you, in the first 12 months in this business, I was dabbling, right? I had the mask on big time and I wasn't speaking my truth. And my story was I just like sharing my journey in an effort to inspire others. And while that was certainly a part of my story and it still is today, it's one facet of it. And my business, when I just shared that, it stayed so stagnant. In fact, it didn't grow at all. So then I had what I call a little bit of accidental growth. I was dabbling in a little bit of personal development. Something would pop up and I'd listen to it and it would kind of encourage me to take the mask down just halfway and I'd just speak a little bit more. And when I did that, you know what? Business started growing a little bit of traction, but it wasn't the growth that I was looking for. And then one day, a lot of people asked me, you know, 12 months ago, you were like a bull out of a cage. What happened? I was sick of feeling suffocated in my story and not speaking my truth, both personally and professionally. And I decided it was time to take the mask off completely and get out there and start speaking my truth and stepping into my authenticity. And when I did that, not only did I feel like these chains had just broken free from me, 
but my business grew from three figures a month to four figures a month to having my first five figure a month business in this space. So what is my story, right? What's the real truth? Before I started this business, Ben was working our traditional business here on the Gold Coast, soaking him up of about 60 to 70 hours a week. I was working in corporate communications for four days a week. The kids are in vacation care and after school care and all of that. So life in the fast lane. And we got to a point in the business in where not only did it stop growing, we were competing with the online world, but it started going backwards very quickly. And we buried our head in the sand for way too long, letting it spiral backwards. So we reached a point in that business where we were both exhausted. We were sick and tired of being sick and tired, having no time freedom or flexibility. And to be honest with you, our self-belief and self-worth was being chiseled away at by the day. And our relationship was starting to suffer. Our parenting was starting to suffer. And the thought of running that business for another 12 months, honestly, I didn't think I'd have a marriage at the end of it. So we decided we had to sell. And to sell it quickly, we had to cop quite a financial loss. And I'm not talking a $5,000 credit card, I'm talking a six-figure loss. And as young parents, having that kind of, it's bad debt hanging over your head, it was tough. So we did what we thought that we should do. I pick up the extra day so that I'm five days a week at work. Ben goes back to traditional work. That's all that we really knew that there was. And we would have to sit there for another eight or nine years trying to get ahead again in life. So we made the short-term sacrifice, which I'm so grateful and appreciative for, that in our mid-30s with three kids, we were moving back home with Ben's parents to try and get ahead again. And that was tough. Going back, you felt like a failure as a couple, as parents, in business, and it was like going back home with your tail between your legs. So we did that, and then I remember sitting there one day, three kids in one room, Ben and I in a room that didn't even have a door. And I was sitting there one Sunday and I could see Kira at a Juice Plus conference in, I think it was Perth. And she was surrounded by community. She was surrounded by connection. She was just oozing with this purpose and passion. And I could see that next level of, a freedom, of freedom and abundance in her life. There's a little gold nugget there right now. Even if you're sick of getting photos and video footage on your phone, get it all right now. The world is in pain and they are screaming for what you've got the opportunity to be part of today. So then, I wish I could be like Adam and say the rest is history and this was really easy, but this has been the most fucking hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I know it hasn't been easy for Adam either, but he threw that in there. So, you know, as I said, I started dabbling in this space, um, but then I had my light bulb moments where I had to really shift from that sense of, this is all about me, and it's so hard, and life's so hard, and Juice Plus should be paying me more because I'm spending so much time on social media, but I'm not bringing any customers or team on. Um, and, you know, it was time for me to really take ownership of that next chapter of our lives and stop being the victim and start being the victor. So we got to work, right? I'm trying to, um, I didn't realize this screen was going to be so far away, I'm a bit of a rookie on stage and I can't even read it, but I'm going for it. Um, you know, I had to move from, oh, thank you, you just made it big for me. Um, I had to start trusting myself. I'm glad I shared that publicly. Um, I had to start trusting myself. I had to start backing myself. Because when I started this business, there was no self-belief. There was no confidence. 
Yes, I love sharing my wellness journey, but even that was starting to dwindle away a bit as well. So the system worked. We've got an incredible company. All of the training is available to us. I was the only variable. So then, you know, how did I start growing? How did I start getting this thing actually going for me? How did I stop dabbling and having that accidental growth and start turning that into intentional growth and start to blow this freaking thing up? How did I grow from being an SSC to an NMD in nine months and have 300% business growth within that period of time and get back on our feet financially and move into our new home? I, <sighs> I had to get real, and that's why I've called my presentation today the real story. I had to get real. I felt like I was suffocating. So the first people that I wanted to share my story with, my new story, was with my team. And I wanted to give a, a special team training dedicated to sharing my story with them. And it's funny, I rem remember the day, it was a Sunday, and I thought, you know what, enough is enough, mask is coming off. I got the team together for a special training on the Monday night. I said, I just, I need to give you guys the real story, but we're going to have a bit of a vision casting session. The numbers that turned up for that training was out of this world. I was crying. I felt embarrassed. I felt like an imposter. But by me sharing, the women around me located the capacity within themselves to actually start speaking their truth and find their vulnerability as well. So on that session with my team, not only did I share where I was, the past, where I currently was in the business, but I shared where I was going. And because I had this newfound certainty and belief, and it was like Kimberly's steam train is going here, they didn't want to. They didn't want to get off that train. They were all on with me, and the trust and the connection that happened within our team, the belief just went through the roof. So that's something that I do every six months because my vision is still expanding, and I don't keep that to myself. I share that with the team as well. Um, I had to run this business in stolen moments, right? So fast forward back here. I know Linda said I can work in this space full time now and I'm so grateful, but I built this business in stolen moments. I, my hand on my heart sharing that with you today. And when you're building something in stolen moments and you're stepping into that role as a leader, you've got to start making some trade-offs, right? So for me, you know, that meant early mornings before work, lunch breaks. I remember getting in my car at lunchtime and just driving around the block so I could jump on a team call or do a three-way chat or catch up on some training. So any moment that I had, I was building this business. Sometimes that meant sacrifices and those trade-offs, as I said. Ben's parents lived around an hour away from our school and our work. So I was used to a 10-minute commute. It was now taking me an hour stuck in traffic. And because that house that we were in, there was no office, there was not even a quiet corner for me to host a team training in. So I would get home from work at 6 o'clock. Ben would walk in the door at 6.30. We wouldn't even get a chance to have dinner together. I'd be back in my car at 6.45 to try and get up the highway to my sister's house to host the team training. And some nights that meant not putting my kids in bed. And I knew that that wasn't a long-term thing. It was a short-term trade-off. But I had to get this done and get it up and running. Then I had to get crystal clear on my top three one-year goals. Linda was on a training session with me once, and she said, if you don't know what your top three one-year goals are, I can't work with you. She's laughing now because she knows it's true. But it got me into the driver's seat, right? Well, what are my top three one-year goals? And I had set goals before, but I was never really good at actually achieving them. And the difference for me was the second point on that slide right now. I had to ensure my diary reflected my goals. The day-to-day -day activity needed to reflect the goals. I then had to set compassionate boundaries around that schedule because my time was so precious. So you know what? 
I had a pretty solid workload at my, my old job in corporate communications. And for me, you know what? I wanted to show up and do a live on a Monday morning before my workday would actually start. So sometimes for me, that meant no wine time on a Sunday afternoon because I couldn't be foggy on a Monday morning. I wanted to get in at that aligned state and get that live done. So I started thinking, you know what? I've got to start getting a little bit more protective around my schedule. The game changer for me though, guys, was mindset and really stepping into that identity as a leader in this business. So identity, let's start there. As I said, when I started this, I wasn't feeling like a boss babe. I wasn't feeling like an empowered woman. I wasn't feeling like a businesswoman. I felt like a failure. So I needed to create a new identity and I needed to do that pretty quickly. So I started asking myself better quality questions. I wanted to be an NMD, I'm not gonna hide that. I wanted to reach that position in this company because I knew what that meant for my family and what that meant for my business and life. So I started asking myself, how does an NMD get out of bed in the morning? How does she show up to a team training even when she doesn't want to be there? How does she look at her schedule for the day? How does she close on a customer call? How does she close on a three-way chat? I arrived there up here and in here before I actually got there. And some of the girls on my team, it's funny, when I actually hit NMD, they said, oh, we already thought that you were. I was like, yeah, well, I was, but head office just didn't know it yet because the numbers didn't stack up. So as I said, um, in terms of, sorry, I jump around a lot. I'm a Gemini and there's lots of different voices going off for me. I'm trying to stick to my presentation. Um, I had laser focus, though, on my vision. As I said, I shared my fresh vision with my team. And because I had so much certainty in that, they bought on to that certainty. I wasn't certain right now where I was, but I was certain in where I was going. And that is where you get that belief from. Then it was time to clean up those limiting beliefs, that little voice that I shared with you earlier. And she's still there, but I've changed my relationship with her. And I have three main limiting beliefs that I've done some work on over the past 18 months. And that first belief is a fear of outshining others, making people around you feel less than. The second fear is a fear of loss and also a fear of success. So if something good happens, maybe something bad will happen. Or you know what, maybe success comes with a lot of responsibility. Do I really want that? That's the, the voices I had going on. And then I had the big one, what about if I'm not enough? What if I haven't earned it? And that last belief, I spent 19 years in the corporate communication sector, which was very male dominated in the property and finance space. And I would execute multi-million dollar PR campaigns. I would secure million dollar clients for the business. And for around about 19 years, I was told there were always remarks made that, of course, Kimberly would get the clients. She's got blonde hair and tan skin. It's got nothing to do with her intellect. Now I can look at those people and say, come and spend a day in my diary with my self-discipline and my mindset, and I'll show you what fucking success looks like. So how did I do it? How do I create that mindset? How do I create that unstoppable belief that I now have through daily rituals and emotional conditioning? I couldn't just rely on motivation to start bouncing out of bed and pretend to be that NMD that I wanted to be. I had to start committing to that through my daily diary. And my mindset is the number one high paying activity in my business. I do not open my office until I've done some sort of emotional conditioning. In your workbook, I have listed everything that I do. Um, meditation, and I want to pause there and park there just for a moment with you because meditation for me isn't just a personal tool about calming my mind and getting into state. Meditation is one of my most powerful business tools. When you start to calm down that monkey mind, 
the impulses surface, the creativity surfaces, the ideas surface, the wording for that conversation surfaces. That then goes into my diary every single morning and then it gets executed that day. So these random ideas that you have coming up, it's time for you to start taking the action. Visualization and manifestation, which I know you guys are gonna go into this afternoon, I then read more than I scrolled. And that was a game changer for me. I'm a bit ashamed to say that probably before the start of last year, I reckon I read two books in about 10 years. Now I'm good for two to three books a month. I jam my mind intentionally with so much of the good stuff that I don't have a lot of time to look left and right and see what everyone else is doing. And Celine said to me once on a call not that long ago, read a book until you know how to teach it. My favorite book's up there, The Big Leap, and I think I'm up to about my 12th time reading it. Um, I've got this little timer buzzing saying, get off stage. Um, I started showing up with inspiration. So as you've heard a lot about today, there's action to be taken, right? But if you want to really stop feeling like this business is just pushing a boulder up a hill, then as the girls said, it's time for you to get into a, an aligned state. And when you do that, the action starts to flow a lot more easy and you start to enjoy the action as well. So when I did all of that mindset work and the belief, I started showing up as a better leader for my team and I stepped into the shoes of being a leader. And I was scared to do that for so long because I thought, ah, a leader, what happens if I get on a call with a, a, a teamie and they want to ask me questions and I don't know the answers? They're going to think less of me. So that's all a bit too scary. But what I understood was my job as a leader and as a coach isn't to give any answers really at all. My job is to ask questions and get a spotlight out and shine it on their strengths so that they can uncover the answers to themselves. So I have um, from NMD school that I was really fortunate enough to be able to attend last year, Linda did a beautiful session on how to become a better coach, how to ask those quality questions. If I get one-on-one -on -one with a team member, I'm not gonna tell them how many points it takes to get to Partner Plus. We have training for that. There is training available for them every day. What I wanna discover is why aren't they actually taking the action and really help them step into their greatness. So in that book, um, the workbook, I have given that all to you and all of the questions are there. Um, so my closing questions for you to, are to consider You've done your plot this morning, your story, but some of you in this room, you've left some things off the paper for fear of being judged. And that's your goal. What you think is in the way really is the way in this business. And I just want to tell you right now that you are worthy and this thing is fucking worth it. <laughs>